welcome to Game Face. Thank you so much for joining us again this evening. Once again, my t-shirt has been provided by Insert Coin. Use the code GAMEFACEUP20 to get 20% off orders, which is basically free shipping, isn't it? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I've got to mention, actually, as well as Insert Coin, lovely people, thanks for keeping me in neat, clean clothing. I do appreciate it. Uh, the opening titles were by Blue Chew and the music was by Oracle. I never mentioned that. Uh, so please, please check out Oracle DMG and Blue Chew 121. Tonight's show, we're going to be talking to David Fox, who, oh, look at this. I can't wait for this. Uh, I'm very, very happy about this. We're going to be talking Thimbleweed Park and the rest of his career, whatever he wants to chat about, really. Uh, we've also got the Master, we've got Master Chief's head down here. I'm going to get that up in a little bit and I, I don't know what miracle stopped it, the green screen messing with it, but it works. You can see it. I'm going to be having a little chat to Master Chief. I can't believe we're doing that. Uh, I can hear something feeding back. Have you got your volume up? All right, no worries, no worries. Uh, we've also got a brand new chip battles for you. The Tinfoil Hat Brigade versus Duke Flex and... <laughs> We're going to end the show on a video by Word Burglar. He's been very, very kind to let us play it in its entirety during the stream. But if you are watching on YouTube, we're only going to show a segment of it and then you have to jump over to his channel. But don't worry, you'll, there'll be links and things forcing you that way. No problems whatsoever. Last week, we had a competition for Paula Powered's CD. There it is. And we do have a winner. Oh, let me get it up, actually. It's on that other bit there, isn't it? It's Daniel, Twitter user Zandat Solaria. Well done, mate. Uh, we're getting a tweet out to you right now. So if you're not watching live, you do know that you've won. Well done, Daniel. Uh, we'll get that PM you your address and we'll, we'll, we'll sort it all out. I'm not going to do it now because I'm live on air, aren't I? Uh, we've got more competitions. We've got like 20 copies of Fury to give away. 10 via our Facebook and 10 via our Twitter. All you have to do is share the post and like our page. Obviously, drop us a like. Hey, come on. That's why we do all this, giving away free stuff. So we can... We can get the word out and get it all shared and all wonderful, wonderful stuff. Okay, that's it for the intros. I'm going to talk to Dave Fox in a minute. He's on the line. I'm going to tell you though, he's famous for his work on LucasArts. But then him and his wife moved on to developing wonderful educational books and apps and programs that I'm going to ask him about. And But then recently, he got back into the point and click game with uh, Thimbleweed Park, which I, I absolutely adored. And I'm, re I'm really glad I did because I had... Very high expectations for everyone involved, and yeah, I absolutely love it. So let's get him on now, eh? Is he there? Hello! <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Oh, I can't hear him. <laughs> I've got no Can audio. Hello, <laughs> Give the bro. wire a wiggle. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Fox? Are you okay? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. I'd like to start on Thimbleweed Park and how this came about, really, because for me, I, I adore point-and-click adventures, but I got sick of mentioning it on the show because it, I considered it a dead genre, really. It was done, gone, put into the history books. How on earth did Thimbleweed Park happen? Well, I have pretty much nothing to do with it happening. Um, Ron, Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick... Um, two old friends from LucasArts. Um, I think we're having coffee one day, and they just kind of threw out, hey, it would be kind of fun if we went back and did one of those old point-and-click games like we used to. And the idea kind of stuck, and they ended up deciding to go the Kickstarter route. And um, so about two and a half years ago, they started a Kickstarter campaign. It was the, um, I think it was in December... So that would have been um, 2013. And I was peripherally involved in that. I got to take a look at their their page. They were in the process of them building it, um, how they were going to look at, um, how it was going to be presented to the people, what the pitch was, what the uh, all that information. So I got to give some feedback. And I ended up, um, when, when I... When it blew past its initial milestone of, I think it was 350,000, they were asking, I ended up um, maybe saying, 
I, I made sure they knew that I would love to be a part of it if they got enough funding for it. And when they did, then uh, the, there was enough to bring in additional people on the team. So I think they announced that maybe two or three weeks into the Kickstarter that I was I was going to join and Mark Ferrari, who was who's an amazing artist, um, pixel artist who did a lot of the the work with us in the late '80s and early '90s. I think he did he worked on at least one of the Monkey Island games, and he did a lot of our most of our backgrounds, not all of them, but a lot of them. The other was Octavi um, Navarro who did the, the rest of our backgrounds. And um, so I joined the team. And that's how it came about. I, I, I've got to tell you, my expectations, because, you know, it, it, for me, uh, Maniac mentioned Data Tentacle, uh, Monkey Island, uh, just huge, huge parts of my childhood, huge, massive. They, they molded me as I was growing up. So my expectations going into this were insanely high, not just for the graphical style, which thank you for the option, by the way, to have the retro text and all that is a <laughs> mwah, beautiful, beautiful touch for me, for my like, yes, of course I want it the old way. But uh, <laughs> most importantly, though, was this, the script and the delivery. I, I was like, high expectation and it was all there. It was it was spot on, you know, the straight away with the joke about the, the dead body pixelating. Oh, by the way, <laughs> Wait, let, let's stay away from spoilers because I've been hassling a lot of people to check this game out and I don't want to ruin any of it. But um, are you happy with how it's been received, really? Yeah, well, well, this is a first for me. I mean, I, I mean, first of all, yes, most of the reviews I've read are really, really, really positive. I think last night I checked, it was like a 85 on Metacritic. Um, and we ended up... Um, um, Back when I was doing games in the 80s, early 90s, there really wasn't any direct feedback. So this is a new, new thing for me to actually have interaction both with the Kickstarter backers during the entire process. We had a really active blog and we did um, regular podcasts. And it's almost like you know, someone commented that if you go back and read the, the history or the blog during the making of the game, it's almost like... Um, getting a master course in game design. Um, it's all there. We were really transparent, especially Ron. I mean, he gave information about budgeting and the whole process and a lot, a lot of game design questions that came up. Um, so having, you know, 15,000 people or, or so who were interacting with us during the making of the game and then this immediate feedback as soon as it's out. I mean, I, the most I ever got back in the 80s was maybe one or two letters that got sent to the fan club, the Lucasfilm Games fan club, and that was pretty much it. Um, I really had no sense of people playing the game, or just numbers of people who we, who we sold it to. Um, in fact, at the time, um, I think we were you know, we were assuming that the games we were doing would have a lifespan of maybe two or three years, because we assumed that once, say, Commodore 64 is went into the garage and got replaced with newer computers, or, P or DOS machines hit, bit the dust, that people would just stop playing the games. And we just totally missed the idea that there'd be these emulators that came out, or people would um, create ScumVM and create a way to play the game, the games on modern computers. So I didn't realize that till I went to a, um, a demo conference in... Um, in Norway, Oslo, Norway, in 2004, and someone showed me Zach McCracken on their Nokia phone. This is a 2004 Nokia running a C64 emulator. And I was like, oh my God. So everyone still knew the stuff, and, and um, we still had fans. I, that was amazing to me, because I, I was kind of out of the industry for that period. I, I wasn't keeping track. I, I like the way you said that you, you get one or two letters because there's a cheeky reference to that in the game itself as well, isn't there? That's so the, that old, the old way of doing things. I love the sort of pay phones and there is, there's a very good moment with a, a letter that's being sent to, well, it's not called Lucas, is it? Because you've been very, very careful with the, the copyright and all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, beautiful no, no relationship at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really like the game in terms of, I, I can see why the extra options were added in terms of the hint line. And I do really, really like the way it was implemented actually in terms of the, the old school, so, you know, people like me can enjoy it, but also new audiences and the in-game jokes. Uh, why did that option come about? 
Well, when we first were, when we were building the game, I think all of us, uh, it was me and Vaughn and Jen, who were the, who did the scripting. Um, and we were just having a blast putting in as many in jokes as we could. The artists were putting, were putting in in jokes. And I think it was partly because we knew who hired us essentially to do the game. We're a bunch, you know, 15 or 18,000 Kickstarter backers did it because they loved our old games. So we built the game for them. And also because we, you know, at least for me, I, I would throw in something in with the expectation that Ron would stumble across it, you know, a few weeks later and, and he'd get a, a kick out of it. So we were doing it to, to have fun with each other. And uh, unfortunately, for the, for the people who bought the game who weren't huge fans of the early LucasArts adventure games, um, we started getting a lot of reviews or people would start knocking it. It was like too self-referential, too, too many in-jokes. And, and that was kind of an ongoing um, complaint. So I said, okay, what if we add a, an option to turn them off? And instead of making an option to turn them off, we actually had them turned off by default and you have to turn them back on, figuring that going forward, most of the people playing the game were, would not be our backers. You know, these would be people in the second or third or fourth wave who didn't know about the game, who maybe weren't huge LucasArts fans, who just were told, that, you know, this is a great game, they should pick it up, but didn't really know the references. So then the whole thing is essentially an Easter egg that you have to search for and the options to, to enable, and then you, then you get the jokes again. Um, and I, I, think, you know, I think we did go overboard. Um, <laughs> probably not, not so much for, the, for our initial backers, but you know, for the general audience. So that's why we offered that. And you know, we're, um, Ron made, made a kind of a, a somewhat sarcastic um, option called enable. It was a turn on um, annoying uh, in jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the the toilet paper over or under as well. It's it's, it's funny that there was such an uproar about that. You know. <laughs> yeah, that, that was. I think it was mostly a tongue in cheek uproar. So we put that in in the same vein as the um, the tongue in cheek. I mean, there was a whole article one of the in one of the magazines uh, online websites that. You know, talked about how how off, awful it was that we had the toilet paper facing the wrong direction, and this is how could we even think of doing it? No, we should ever buy the game because of that, and you know, just a bunch of you know, funny things like that. And, and I think most people understood that was a joke, but so we kind of went along and added to the joke by giving them the option to flip it to to over. I I I think, it, but it's for me though. That's just part of uh, what I adore about it, really. And so, I, I just love the fact that we're now living in a world where I can play what to me is my absolute ideal game and done well like this because I, I gave up on point and click adventures because they were just awful, like re far too linear. Te you'd only ever have one item and you knew it was just terrible. And this thing's just given me so much joy. It's been ridiculous. And you mentioned before about not being used to having all this feedback. I've seen you very, very active in the forums. Right. Are, are you enjoying that? Are you enjoying like toilet yeah. paper arguments and stuff? I, I am. I mean, some of it is, you know, I don't want to give away stuff in the forum. So we don't usually say, hey, did you check this out? Um, we're kind of watching as people find things. And a couple of things that are in the game that I have not yet seen anyone reference. They might have seen it and, and not mentioned or they maybe didn't catch it. But, you know, they're it's fun to see what they're saying. Um, they have questions and they can answer the questions if they're not um, going to give anything away. And um, I, I, I'm enjoying that interaction. Um, you know, the, the other thing that was new for me was going to a couple of, of shows. I went to the PAX West in Seattle last September. And that was the first time I think I went to a, um, a public facing uh, game show um, where people were actually playing the game and I could watch them and we could see what the reactions were in real time. And that was really fun. So this is all, you know, that, that whole element is new to me. And so far it's been really fun. I mean, I guess if the game bombed, 
The Wimby brief. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You just give up the internet for a while. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm, also, I'm also pretty active on Twitter where I'm, I actively look at people's comments about the game and people who win it. And sometimes I'll congratulate people for for um, completing it and you know answer questions there as well. Um, now that we have an in-game hint system, um, I'm not getting a whole lot in the way of like, oh, no, I'm stuck. What do I do next? Because that could be resolved in the game. And I think the main, I was going to say the main reason we added the hint system, um, we felt like it wasn't especially necessary for um, for desktop users. Um, but as we're preparing for the mobile versions right now, um, you're probably less likely to want to pop out of the of the game and and start searching around for in forums or in Google for a hint for where you're stuck. And it just there was also something that was mentioned in some of the reviews. Um, not as a big ding, but we felt it would be a much bigger deal to leave it out for mobile. So that's why we added that in. I, I think it makes perfect sense, to be honest. And, and it's good because if you're a purist, the, you don't have to use the hints, although that temptation is going to be there, isn't it? It's going to be killing you. But yeah, we, uh, we actually have yeah, but There's actually a um, you can go into the preferences file. There's an option you can set which disables the, the hint system. So if you... <laughs> There's one more layer that you have to go back and quit the game and change the option and turn it back on again. So it gives you one more barrier if you really need that. You know, it's like putting a lock on the on the ice cream cabinet or something. Uh, I, I, we've had a couple of questions. Is it okay if I pass them on to you? Uh, oh, yeah. Aaron on Facebook has said, "What was your favorite game to work on for LucasArts?" Um. Well, the three that come to mind are probably Maniac Mansion, Zack McCracken, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Those were back-to-back. And um, Maniac Mansion and Indy were really fun because there was a lot of collaboration with Ron Gilbert and on Indy with Noah Faustine. Um, Zack probably was my favorite just because it was pretty much all my concept. Uh, the other ones, it was much more co-created with other people or working off of a, like an indie working off of an existing story. So um, I'd say Zach's probably my favorite. Um, there's a lot of me in that, um, a lot of the stuff I, I, pas- I, at least I was, I still am passionate about in terms of new agey stuff. And um, I still have, so he has a, a, a warm, a soft place in my heart for it. I still like it a lot. Uh, we've also had a follow-up to that, to actually. Uh, was, it, was it difficult going back to working on that style of game? Um, I, I no, it actually wasn't. I mean, I, I was, I, I think we may all have been a little bit nervous about that, you know, since we really haven't worked together like this for what, 30 years, 25 years. <laughs> wow. And, and so there's a question like, you know, do you, do you still have it? Can you still get in that mode of thinking? Can you, do you still like these people? Um, are you going to, are people, have they changed enough that they're going to be awkward or uncomfortable to work with? And, all of that, I think, pretty much melted away in the first five minutes of our first brainstorming session. And it was like, okay, it's like a little like, okay, how's this going to work? And then we just kind of dive, dove into it and it just like, oh, yeah, here we are. It's like no time had passed, except that now we all had way more experience. And I think we we're much, you know, much more experienced game designers and game creators than we were back then. Um, so that was that was fun, and that's and when I think back to that whole time, really, that's the collaborative experience was the thing I missed the most about being there. Um, I think I assumed that that was the way it was always going to be with any any game company, and I actually went to another company for, short, for a short time after Lucas, where that wasn't my experience at all, and I kind of struck home like how special um, the time at, at Lucas was. In terms of the creativity and the and the collaborative collaborations and everything, uh, we we've had some more questions. And, and, and by the way, before we move on from that, you can see that you get on. You can see that there was magic there because it comes out. I'm going to tell you again. Thank you for this game. Thank you. I've waited years for this. I, I I'd given up. I'd completely given up. Um, Zach Phoenix McCracken, who is a name yeah. that I've seen everywhere. This guy is uh, following you around everywhere. He's asked. Can you ask him which video games will be playable in the arcade room when it's opened on next release? Oh, well, that's that's a secret still. Um, <laughs> there, there are there are going to be arcade games, um, and I can't say yet which ones or, or how many. Um, 
there, I got to do, I, I, did, I coded one of them, and then I had to go back and re, redo them when we got um, final art from Octavi for those. So we first we did, kind of, Ron and I, Ron did, Ron did some, I did one, um, and we ended up um, doing with programmer art, so it looked really, really crappy. And then we got the final art from Octavi, I got to put that back in, and now it's really fun. I also did did a high score table for them. I did the code for that, so we so you actually have a high score table. This is like, I, I don't get excited about retro stuff as much, uh, but this this is just this takes me to a wonderful place. I, I mean, don't expect too much. I mean, these are like really. I think it took it took maybe one or two days to do each game. They're not like they're not deep. <laughs> I but I already expected loads, and and it's oh check this out. You want to see something cool? I can put my hands outside there. How nice is that? <laughs> uh, there's nothing though. Uh, Matt has said, please let him know that I love his t-shirt. There you go. He's talking yeah, about you, not me. <laughs> it's absolutely it's, beautiful. It. This uh, is the. I think this one's available for sale. Oh really? Um, I, yeah. We're getting links out. I know that there's links going out. Uh, Matt, if you go on the show sheet, there's all the links for everything we're talking about right now at the very, very top there. Uh, before we move on, actually, in fact, no, as a way of moving on, are you guys thinking of doing doing another game in this style? Has that come up yet? Um, yeah, well, we've been asked that a lot, like, where's the movie park two? What's happening next? And and I think that we're... I mean, I'd love to work with with these guys again. That was that's one thing that came out of for sure. I think we all really enjoyed the process a lot. But um, we're you know Ron's still working like four days on getting out you know the next platforms. I mean, it's already been announced on PS4 and kind of semi announced on Switch, and so he's probably going to be working full time for a few more months at least. And you kind of want to take some time off and, and regroup and then actually see how well it does. I mean, if this, if this, if it, if it is successful financially, then yes, I think there'll be some kind of a follow-up and may not have nothing to do with this. It may just be the same people getting back together again or not. We don't know. Um, so to totally don't know yet. Check back in maybe six months or so. Maybe we'll know. <laughs> um, I actually got sent a review copy for this game, but I'm, I'm 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 buying it as a gift for someone else because I feel bad having not contributed. So I'm going to buy it and send it. I know, I know who it is. I'm not going to say it on here because it's like a gift and it will be a surprise and everything. But yeah, I, I need I, to contribute. I need it to be a success desperately. Uh, so you were. Obviously, you were you were right there at the start of the whole point and click thing. But I'd like to ask you quickly, if I could, about where things moved on after that, because you went into this wonderful area with your wife of the sort of educational books and the apps and the programs. And I'd like you to talk about that a little bit, if you could, because I think I, I it's just wonderful. Everything I look at and all these new things that keep popping up are just uh, you've taken the high road in terms of your career. I've been very impressed. Yeah, well, I, I was never really. Um, other than the fir very first game I did, it really wasn't into, into shooting type games or first person shooters or any of that. And I, I'm not very good at, at playing them and didn't really have a lot of interest in making them. And um, my real interest was really much more in immersive experiences. I, I was trying to do stuff in, in VR back in 1991 and 92. And it was just too early for that. Then it, the tech was just not there and it was too expensive. Um, but uh, my dream has always been kind of in two areas. One in, in the area of doing something really immersive and location-based entertainment. So the idea of a, uh, something in a theme park that was truly interactive um, and totally, you know, fully immersive. And if anyone's read the, the books, dream park, the dream park books, um, that kind of matches close to what I, I was really interested in doing. Um, but the other area would be uh, working, doing games that, that were uplifting in some way that altered people's experience of um, the light, their lives, their relationships, that improve things in some way. So that's my wife's area. And she's written books on that. And, and my first experience of doing, getting back into doing stuff on myself, I, um, when the iPad first came out, we I took some of her... Um, her middle school confidential series books and did the art took the art for those and turned them into kind of a graphic novel app um three of those and and just got into that experience and the very really the first game i did 
since um, you know since the early '90s was a game I did based on Rube Goldberg's um, chain reaction machines called Rube, Rube Works. And I did. The, I finished that in nineteen in two thousand thirteen, and it's it's out. Um, actually, did that with Unity um, under their. They had a trial um, Unity Games division. They created to actually publish games, and they funded the game. And um, it came out on most platforms, or like desktop and and mobile. And um, I got to work with Rube Goldberg's granddaughter on that. So we actually had the rights to the original cartoons. And for those who in, in Europe may not know Rube Goldberg, um, you know, he, you know, whenever you see like a, a YouTube video of a chain reaction machine, that's, he's like the grandfather of all that stuff. Um, he was a cartoonist in the um, American cartoonist, mostly in the 1920s and 1940s was when he was really popular. Um, he died in 1970, but he's still referred to you know, in the dictionary as a Rube Goldberg machine as something overly something where you take a simple machine and find it and make it overly complicated. So it's um, hilariously overly complicated. So that's the game we did. Yeah, there was a weird uh, thing. It's interesting because, like you said, sorry to interrupt. You, it's it's not a thing over here, but I've seen those little logic puzzles and the way they go along and stuff. And I, I recently I've got a new perspective on all that because I've got a kid now, and uh, mm -hmm. and it really really excited me actually. I'm sort of waiting until she's old enough and I can throw it all in her face and go, look at that, look at that. Yeah, but I've seen five or six year olds doing it. So, um, and how, how old your kid? At uh, two, two. Not quite yet. <laughs> She's all over it though with the touch screen and all that. She right, adores right. it. She it's all to come. It's all to come. Well, you, that's something you could do. Maybe when she's three or four, you could sit down and because it, it, it was reading required, so you could sit down and say, "Let's figure out how to do this." You know, where you're doing it together. But there, there are you know, most of the schools around in, in the states and other places around the world. One of the things that they have kids do are, are build these machines. Um, to teach them about chain reactions and simple simple physics machines and um the game has become a part of that so that when the teachers want the kids to learn about rebuilding machines it's much easier to build it on an app than in real life where where you actually you know hit the thing and the whole thing falls over and you have to take an hour to re rebuild it so in an app you just push a button um and I'm actually not sure. I'm, I'm actually working on it right now because we we have to bring it up to 64-bit for iOS. Um, so kind of putting some time into that, and um, occasionally getting a couple of of Fibbly Park bugs that I get asked to fix. Um, I, I just went through. I think it was last week and added the translations for all the touch-related help screens. And, you know, not real exciting stuff, but, you know, it's stuff that has to get done. Yeah, of course. I've got, you know, from the, from the hard work under the bonnet, it's, it's rarely that exciting. It's all about what rises, what the end result for people like me. That's going, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you, uh, said, you said quite an interesting point about uh, interactive theme parks and stuff. I want to ask you about the Leonardo challenge. Oh, yeah. I was looking at, I was looking at videos for this. It was insane, the scale of it. Yeah, well, the, well the, the facility was already there. So this is at a Tokyo Disney Park called Tokyo Disney Sea. Um, the park has been there for I don't know how long. Um, and about 10 years ago, Annie and I, a friend of ours, John, um, Jonathan Ackley, who people might re recognize his name from the LucasArts adventure games in the 90s. Um, I think he worked, on, he worked on one of the Monkey Island ones um, after Ron did them. He ended up going to Disney um, to the R and D group for the um, Disney. Um, I think it's uh, Walt Disney Interactive. No, Walt Disney. It's the it's the web. I think it is. It's the group that does the theme park research stuff. And he ended up creating a an overlay experience at Epcot, um, which let people use uh, cell phones to interact with. Um, exhibits or things in kind of an adventure game um, taking place in, in, Ep in a part of Epcot that was already there. And it was really well received and he asked, he wanted us to help him design some stuff for other parks. 
So the one in Tokyo Disney Sea is kind of look like something straight out of the game Mist. Um, it's kind of a Renaissance style um, buildings, round tops, and, and kind of Escher like staircases that go all over the place. But other than the, the ambience and the feel of it, there really wasn't a whole lot to do there. And so he asked us to do this overlay game. We kind of came up with this um, because it, this one area was kind of in the Renaissance. We had Leonardo da Vinci was the was trying. It was working with you to help you keep a volcano from blowing up. There happened to be a volcano like right behind it in the adjacent section, and um, they we were pretty elaborate with what we designed. I think they scaled it down and actually implemented it. And I think it opened about nine years ago. So it's still there, um, which was nice to see. But you have to speak Japanese to, <laughs> to, to do it. It's only in Japanese. But there was a video, there, there was a video which you, I think I sent to you, which you could post. Uh, where yes. It's... Someone who speaks English goes through and kind of runs, walks through the experience. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, press the I at the top and there's links to it right below and it's all going out. Uh, yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. Uh, I've got it. It's all saved and I'll get it out. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, but I'm not even tried with Japanese. I learned Oishi and that was it. Delicious. And then I was done. I can't even speak English properly. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're running out of time. So there's one more thing I want to ask you before we go. And that's uh, you talked before about working on VR, but the technology not being quite there yet. What's the sort of thing that you almost want to do next, but you're waiting for the technology to catch up? What's your ideal sort of next progression, really? Well, there's... I, I mean, if I don't do another thing with Ron, that's probably what I would be, do next, would be something in the area of, you know, probably more, more likely, rather than VR, probably more likely would be um, mixed reality or augmented reality or AR, where you're um, where you're in an environment and you're seeing stuff that you're interacting with um, that's projected onto it or it appears to be in there that's computer um, based. And I mean, doing an adventure game in that space would be really fun. Um, I I have ideas of where I'd like to go with it, but I haven't had the time to actually sit back and start designing or playing with it. I haven't bought any equipment yet, figuring that the longer I wait, the better and less expensive it's going to be. Um, and also, I knew if I got it too soon, I, I would totally be distracted from all the, all the other things I have to do first. So that's that'll come, I think, I'm sure. I think we're getting close. I mean, I'm seeing all these really cool add-ons that are all kind of separate pieces like eye tracking and and you know hand tracking that um haven't really been integrated into one system yet it's more like going to an a la carte um restaurant and picking up what you like here and there and it's not really integrated yet so i think we have a few more years before that, that gets into place our our perspective at game face is we really think that uh, arcades are going to make a resurgence because that the, the idea of just going somewhere and paying for an hour or whatever or having all of these things like you've just said all these little different bits and bobs getting added in terms of vr and all the rest of it, it there's not a lot of people who are going to be able to do that at home not until the vr right. equivalent of the mobile phone comes along where it just sucks up all technologies we really do believe that arcades are going to make a huge comeback and, and they already are in some places right right and i agree with that i i I, they can afford the the capital investment to put in the best um, headsets and computers and everything, and, and then to add the the multiplayer aspect, which you really, you know, where you might be doing multiplayer in the same space, like if it was an AR type experience. Um, and there's things you can't just do, like if you you know the idea of having a, a large, you know, the equivalent of laser tag, but in a augmented reality mode where the host space is, is mapped and they know what it is and where they can you know, put, put in your dragons and whatever else you're doing and have you um, do that along with a, a bunch of other people on your team. There was a um, wonderful one of Ghostbusters that launched that was exactly that. Mm -hmm. And within the VR, Mr. Tapeoff rips the roof off and everything. And oh, I love it. I absolutely adore it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm expecting some really awesome stuff to happen there. So it's it's definitely exploding. I think this is the year that um, 
in the last year it's it's only from like kind of in the background to in the foreground but i agree that it's still kind of pricey and and it's also a thing where you, you, people are probably not going to want to buy something which they know is going to be dramatically antiquated you know six months later so people tend to i think at least i do i tend to hold off until we've reached a kind of somewhat of a plateau where it's not going to you know be a crap you know, compared to the next model right afterwards it's moving really fast oh thank you so much for your time this evening and thank you for thimble Wee park thank you so much good well hope you all get if you haven't played it yet play it do it. You, you will like it. You will not be disappointed. I'm not. I'm, I'm not telling David that. I'm telling you who's watching. Play it. Play it. You will play not it. not be disappointed. It's so good. And it, I, again, for me, the option to turn the in-game jokes off. My initial <laughs> reaction was like, "How dare you remove it? This is part of our history." The, but 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 I, I do see now. It does make a lot of sense in terms of creating an independent experience for someone that's new to this level of gaming new to this genre you know and i have nothing but respect for it nothing good thank <laughs> you oh thank you so much and i will hopefully hopefully talk to you when either the dlc or when your next game is announced okay <laughs> happy to be back oh it's wonderful to meet <laughs> you man bye bye okay bye <gasps> I'm not even joking, you know. I'm not even joking. Oh, let me pop that out because it's incredibly distracting. Get Thimbleweed Park. There's links gone out on the... They've, they've gone right now. Please, please, we won't regret it. It's very, very reasonable priced. If, if you want to sort of really get into real retro, real retro, not this this sort of your experiences of it. It's real to me anyway because it's, it's what shaped me and what formed me. Because you're always like that with your own bits and bobs, aren't you? Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. He's lovely. Absolutely lovely. I've been chatting to him on Facebook loads. It's It's been my excuse because he was a guest on the show. I was just like, hey, 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 hey. I've been dead giddy. Let's like, I told me dad and everything. I was like, dad? You never guess. I've never talked to me dad. I was like, you never guess who I'm going to talk to on the show. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that. God, I'm that giddy. I've... I've, I've, I've lost, I'm not even on the running order or anything. Um, Retro Joe's over there, you're waving something at mate. Mate, send it me on a message. That, oh, the that's the system, that's the thing. <laughs> that's why I've got this here. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to wave at me and all the rest of it. Oh, bless your little face. But yeah, David Fox, get Thimbleweed Park, please, please. Please! Right, let's move on. Uh, I'm, I, we're going to be out on time, so I'm not going to get any of the feedback or anything like that. But I do read every word that you send us, and I do see who's been watching and all that. Thank you for joining us this evening. And always, if you are new to the show and you'd like to follow us, it is Game Face Show. Game Face Show, all one word, everywhere. That's our Skype, even. You can just ring us up if you want. Um, we might not have time for you tonight, but if anyone ever wants to call Game Face Show, we're right there. It's just open. It'll just you'll pop up like that. <laughs> right, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tease now. A lot of people have been very giddy about this. I got quite angry at The Verge because they've had a widely shared article on this, the new Atari, where they declared that it was uh, going to be like the NES Mini, but they didn't really... But they also said in the article, you know, that was the title, but then in the article, we like, we don't really know anything about it whatsoever. Loads more details have been coming out. I've been a little bit excited about this, if only because there's extra connectivity and all the rest of it. But, like always, I'll see when it comes. I was just quite excited. It, it sort of sparked off my two 600 days. That was my first console ever. And, yeah, I got kind of like, hmm. Anyway, done with the past. I want to talk about Chiptune. I got sent this yesterday. <laughs> oh. No, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, 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 I've not skipped it, that's it. Uh, for, for anyone that knows Chiptunes equals win will know that this is well, what Brand Brandon's just become Spider-Man now. He's not content with being the president. He's also Spider-Man. And he's been teasing me privately a little bit. Ever the professional, 
I get a lot of people telling me like uh, cheeky secrets and Harley just just this morning sent me a track he's been working on. It's not even finished. He's like, hey, if you want to play this on the show. So I do get sometimes, you know, I, I'm I'm in a slight position of privilege in that way because I, I get these naughty little things. But Mr. President, you won't tell me anything other than, oh, mate, best one yet. You're going to love it. You won't be disappointed and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, he's been teasing me because Chip Tunes equals when the next volume is coming soon. Volume six. Uh, the roster is going to be released on Monday, the 24th. That's this Monday coming. Now, last year we did an interview with Brandon and it came up this idea of dripping out the names. And he did a post the other day where he said, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was kind of a bit tight on some people because it was drawing out the anticipation. Uh, so he's scrapped it this year. He's, he's, he's got rid of Game Face. He's dirty influence. And on Monday, the entire thing is going to drop. If you don't know what Chiptunes equals win is, it is your idea deal entry into the world of chip tune it's a very very well curated compilation of around 50 52 i don't know how many is going to be this year but it's oh oh bye bye dave's on our twitch bye bye dave thank you so much thanks again lovely uh, but it's a very well curated thing and we had a we had corvo on the show and she was a long time listener of the radio show but she never liked the chip tune aspects of it she came in on sunday banging out all the chip tune because she got one of these and she was absolutely over the moon with it and was got sucked into our dirty, dirty evil chip tune scene. Um, but yeah, chip tunes equals win volume six is going to be announced on Monday. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that. God, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tuckered out, you know. Um, I'm that, that really took it out. That guy's like one of my heroes. That's, that's, that, it, it was hard keeping my, my, my if together. What are you looking at? What's wrong with Tucker out? <laughs> Don't give me that. I won't man up, I'll woman up. Uh, right, we've got a very special guest on the show right now. Uh, Joe, could you bring this dude in? Are you ready for this? <laughs> I, don't I legit don't know what's going to happen now. Uh, we, we were sent this to, to check out, to review. Um, there's a link. If you would like to buy one, we've got a link going out. Oh, yeah, you come round come round here. Come round here. <laughs> you want to say hello? There's Retro Joe. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Hello, Mum. Hey, Mum. Uh, my Mum don't watch this, I don't think. She texts me now and again going, do you still do the games? The game stuff. Uh, yeah, so Joe's brought this down tonight. We were sent this, and look at that. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's Master Chief's head. I've no idea why this isn't chromering out on the, on the green screen. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, so AC World have sent us this, and uh, AC Worldwide, sorry. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Bless your little face. What does he do, Joe? I need to set that up. What does he do? <laughs> it's a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> it's a Bluetooth speaker. No, I know what it does. I just want, yeah, want you to show me. But yeah, we've got a link going out right now if you do want to buy these. We've... Hello. Hello. I am your father. I am Master Chief. You're all right. So, <laughs> so this is this is yeah. I was like, do you know what you're gonna say yet? And you were like, no, I don't know. You're not saying anything, are you? You're not giving. <laughs> so go on, tell me what this is. Tell tell me what you are. I am a Bluetooth. I am a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> I play music at high quality volumes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're very pretty, Master Chief's head. What's, oh, all, this, what's all this nonsense on here? These buttons, what do they do? That's my volume, That's my volume control. <laughs> oh, I don't want to turn that off. That's the Bluetooth, isn't it? Yeah. And what's this? It's got a USB in. Does the USB in actually work? I think it does. I think it does. And there's an AUX thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Does all this come off? Stop messing with your face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, we've been sent one of these. If this is your sort of thing, I remember we'd, we've got a few collectors who watch. And you get why? Why? Why did you come with gloves exactly? I saw some white gloves the other day. Because I don't want you to get stains all over my face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been fiddling with you, aren't I? <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that. 
<laughs> but yeah, there's a link right now uh, on the Twitch. And if you watch it on YouTube, there's a link there. We'll probably pop it in the corner die thing as well. If you'd like to buy one, you can get 10% off with the special game face link and all the rest of it. And uh, Oh, come on, please let me mess with it. Oh, no, no, I'm not allowed, am I? We've got to keep it nice. It, it, it looks dead fiddly, though, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, right, no, I'm not going to mess with it. Let's get rid of that. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Is it off? Kill it! Turn it off! I thought it did his voice. I thought it did the man's voice. It does too. Why, why did it not do it? Because that's when you pair it. It's a... do, do, wait, pair it then? Pair, oh no, we can't do it, can we? It, 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 do it, do it, do it. Okay, it <laughs> now it's gone. Put him back. <laughs> I'll put him back. One sec, one sec, one sec. Here we go, here we go. Oh, make him do Master Chief. <laughs> there we go. I have a job to do. <laughs> Jesus. I've got a job to do. And that's the actual guy that did the original voice, isn't it? Oh, well, that's very, very good. But yeah, AC Worldwide. There's a special 10% off if you'd like that. That's adorable. I'm going to have a little fiddle with it after the show. Thanks for that. <laughs> That was intentionally like I, I didn't I didn't know what he was gonna say and oh it felt good I feel all right about it all uh, right what's next oh my god <gasps> we're gonna talk about the fact that uh, Red Bubble hey hey we've got this going at the moment if you'd like to buy some stickers and what what this is is like a nice way of supporting Game Face because we've got the website we've got the radio show we've got this show as well we've got all sorts of stuff going on and chip balls that we do the live events if you'd like to support the show but don't want to just sort of bungle's money which would be kind of weird um, you can just buy some stickers off Red Bull we're going to expand what we've got on there at the moment we didn't want to just sort of throw out and do t-shirts we have a lot of people asking us about t-shirts and hoodies and stuff we didn't want to just throw existing stuff on so we're gonna get it adjusted so that it's right for that thing and then there will be some stuff on there but yeah please check out the link and all the rest of it and if you would like to support the show there's a nice way to do it here and you get something back out of it and uh, I, I, I don't think we get much from it to be honest we get a couple of couple of pence or whatever but it's just nice isn't it eh? it's a nice way of helping us out without us begging <laughs> and all the rest of it. Uh, what's next? I, I've, I've not put thingy on my thing. Have I got Splatoon 2? That was before Red Bubble. Was it before Red Bubble? Can we talk about Splatoon 2 now? This is out tomorrow and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But a lot of people have been kicking off already about the fact that Nintendo's weird sort of choices with the, the the voice app and everything. It's really, really buggy. It doesn't really work very well. If you go out of the app, to go on an IM or whatever, it stops working. The screen has to be on at all times. It's a huge mess and a lot of people are moaning about it. But check this out. Do you know what's going to happen? Switch owners are going to carry on doing exactly what Switch owners do, which is being really, really happy. Uh, Splatoon 1 didn't have voice chat or anything like that. And people loved it. They adored it. They did competitions and all sorts. And if they really wanted it, they used, you know, TeamSpeak or whatever to chat. I don't think... Any of the fuss around the voice and the internet and all the rest of it is gonna is gonna affect it at all because switch owners are just in their own happy little bubble there, you know. Uh, so what can I do? What can I do? Yeah, stop moaning about the switch. Stop moaning about Nintendo. Nintendo don't care. And Nintendo owners don't care. They just don't give a toss. <laughs> they really don't. Right. Chip battles, as promised, we've got a brand new chip battle for you every single week. Hopefully, we've not done the last week yet. I keep making that promise <laughs> every single week. And tonight is no difference. We went to Liverpool for Duke Flex versus the Tinfall Hat Brigade. And it was a good one. Welcome to Chip Battles! Tonight we're at Maguire's Pizza Bar and we've been hosted by Chip Fest 15 Halloween-ish edition. It's been a good night so far. I've quite enjoyed it. Thank you so much for bringing me down for a chip battle. The rules are very, very simple. They get three rounds each and they're winning your favour. You can vote there. And I want you guys as well, eh? It's all about you, innit? It's all about you. To my left! It's his first battle and he has not been messing about so far. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Mr. Duke Flex! 
How you feeling, man? You good? You good? What? <laughs> this was so exciting. This is. It's his second battle. He absolutely destroyed it in his first one. He's got the highest win ratio so far. Mr. The Tin Foil Hat Brigade. Oh, he's already doing well for the crowd. How are you feeling, man? Bang, bang. <laughs> we flipped a coin before we started rolling. Duke Flex won. He's going second, so you're up first, man. How are you feeling? I, I always come first. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me, man. <laughs> Why can't I do anything at Game Face that doesn't go straight down that direction? Mate, are you ready? Round one. Let's go. That was a nice start. You're sort of easing him in there, aren't you? Loosening all the orifices. I respect that. I respect that. Do flex. Round one, your reply. You ready, my man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Round one, give it to me. Nice, nice, nice. Round two. Tell you what, I tell you what, that's the most dancing tonight. He's got the room going. He's got the room going. Third and final round, man. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Huh? Uh, I'm gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this. You guys be getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. I'm looking forward to shitting myself whenever you're ready, man. Man, that was really good. What were we thinking? G yeah. Flex, final round, your reply, are you ready?
Oh, it was a weird one, that. It was a really, really weird one. I enjoyed it. I, I I loved how much they both brought it in terms of the drama and the action and all the rest of it. But we've not really got much time to talk on it now. I've, we've just been going on and on so much. Please check that out on our YouTube. Go on YouTube forward slash Game Face Show. Subscribe. Click the little bell. Is it a little bell? I don't know. I feel weird saying little bell. Especially... <laughs> Especially with my little red knob that I've been given tonight. Look at that. <laughs> but yeah, please, YouTube forward slash Game Face Show. Check out the video there. Vote for your winner. Tell us why. We love your comments. We love the drama. Uh, I'm not even that into wrestling, but I love that this thing's developing with chip battles, with people playing parts and coming on in character. Duke Flex had dancers then and everything. It's been absolutely beautiful. I loved it. Please check out our pinned tweet and our pinned Facebook post as well. Win yourself a copy of Fury. We've got like 20 copies of it to give away. So give us a share, give us a like, and you've got every chance of winning it. Now, we're going to end tonight's show with NARC. Uh, and this is by Word Burglar. And oh, oh, I've just had a thing that I was putting the wrong links. I don't I don't know what you were putting out. <laughs> I don't know. I'll deal with that in a minute. It's the end. Of the it's too late now. We're done. We finished the show. But yeah, Word Burglar has sent us this amazing new release. If you're watching this live, we're going to stream the whole thing. If you're watching on YouTube, then we're we've, we're going to have, we're going to cut it down because we don't want to rob him of his you know his views and everything. So click the eye in the corner there, or click the description below, and there's links to his video. And this is about when he got the high score for Nark as a kid. So yeah, check it out. Enjoy and I'll see you next week. Oh no, the night, man. Let's go. Let me take you on an 8-bit trip. Into a past life. So vivid feels like it was last night. Five buttons, two hands. One choice, the red or the blue man And let me tell you, these guys were bristled So skilled they could jump and fire missiles It was the 90s, I was the perfect